welcome to the Divorce Women's Guide podcast, where we talk about the things us divorcees are thinking, but not always talking about as we turn our divorce into the best gift we've ever been given. And I do so with a little bit of sass and a whole lot of class. I am your host, Wendy Sterling, founder of The Divorce Rehab. I am here to support you in this transition phase of your life so you can start your new best chapter on your own terms. After all, that's what I did after my own divorce. And now it is my mission to change the conversation around divorce and help you see why your divorce like mine was the best gift you ever received. Hello and welcome to today's episode. If you're wondering how to stop feeling okay one minute and not the next because you're struggling with the pain of your divorce, stay tuned because today we're going to talk about why it is totally okay to not be okay every second of every day. Sometimes it feels like society says that we always have to be happy or that showing our sadness is a sign of weakness that we should be putting a mask on to hide the darkness that lies behind the smile. And don't get me wrong, that was me almost every day for about six months after I separated from my husband at the time. For some reason, we have a hard time allowing ourselves to not be okay because we're trying to portray an image of what someone going through divorce actually looks like. Well, guess what? There isn't a mascot for what a divorced woman looks like, and there isn't a right or wrong way to look or feel. Some moments or some days were happy, and others were crying. Some days were laughing while we're crying, and sometimes we're screaming into a pillow or even screaming in our cars. And let's be honest, sometimes we have some not so proud moments in front of our own kids. You know what I'm talking about, where we accidentally react more harshly than we intend. And then of course, when we see the other person's reaction, whether that be a facial expression, lack of words, or even a bodily reaction, the guilt sets in. And suddenly, we feel really bad for not being our best self. Why? Why do we put so much pressure on ourselves? Why are we so afraid to say to those in our life, hey, I'm actually not okay today? And yet then, we'll go into a Facebook group or to our group counseling or call up our best friend and vent our true feelings. And sometimes venting to a group of people we don't know is even easier. What is it that makes us want to hide or pretend when we're not okay? And for some reason, there's so much shame and embarrassment for those of us who admit and say that we're going through or want a divorce, even just uttering those words. Well, Part of my mission as a divorce recovery specialist is to take the shame and embarrassment out of divorce, to allow and give permission to women to feel their pain without others thinking that they're weak. And my wish is for there to be more self-compassion in this world, both for ourselves and for others, because it's okay to not be okay every day day. And listen, I know you don't want to stay in that place, that place of sadness, loneliness, and anxiety-ridden abyss. You want to get out of it. You want to start feeling hopeful and happy again. You even want to know what being single again feels like when you're smiling, but that feels so heavy and so far away. And I totally get it. I remember being there. I remember that feeling. And my coach told me the same thing. You will be okay. And even though it is so hard to see right now, just because you're alone doesn't mean you have to be lonely. And you don't have to be sad or anxious or unhappy either. You 
have choices. Just a few years ago, I found myself staring down the barrel of ending a nearly 16 year marriage and suddenly becoming a single woman for the first time as an adult. And I had two kids. There were a variety of things causing me a great deal of anguish in making the decision to leave. And in my, and it pains me in my fiercely independent heart to admit this. But one of those things that was causing me so much anguish was the thought of being alone. Though in truth, I'd been alone for years. Being married gave me some sense of security, mostly in that it allowed me to lie to myself about how alone I actually was. It was my smokescreen, my comfort zone. And though I was miserable there, I wasn't excited about leaving it either. If you're staring down that same barrel and feeling that same dread of being without a partner after divorce, even if you want to, don't want to be with the one you currently have, know that you are normal, that we've all been there. The idea of being a single mom can be a daunting one, but as you're going to learn, there's a lot to appreciate about your uncoupled state. Look just a little bit harder and you may actually see and find that being alone isn't just something that you can be okay with. It's actually something that you may start to fall in love with. So I'm asking you to just hear me out on what some of those things might be. Number one, you are in complete control. (laughs) And control is often a word saddled with negative connotations. But in this sense, I mean it positively because you have all of it. You are going to have the opportunity to create a life that you want. And whether that means getting your finances in order, moving into a different house, accepting a new job, or going back to work, you can do exactly that. No negotiations with a partner required. Being in control gives you power over your current reality as well as your future as never before. It's actually really empowering. Number two, you have a newfound freedom. Now, you may not equate being a single woman with freedom, but there's more of it than you imagine. And especially if your kid's other parent intends to stay involved and exercise some custody, or if your kids are out of the house. And so what can you do with that said freedom? Well, anything you damn well please. If you want to sleep until noon on the weekend and order pizza for breakfast, you can do that. Nobody can tell you no. My own personal favorite freedom is sitting outside in my backyard with my cup of coffee in the morning on the weekends and just being, enjoying the silence. Some other enjoyments that I have that I know many of my clients feel as well is you can pick up a book and read. You can go for a hike. You can master a complicated recipe or make food that your kids don't normally eat. Go for it. Have a dance party in your kitchen. Just have at it. And even when your kids are home, you can take advantage of declaring tonight's movie night, or we can decide to go to the neighborhood pool past bedtime. You can let your kids stay up a little bit later. Welcome to freedom. And number three, you have a chance to reconnect with yourself. Do you guys remember that scene in Runaway Bride where Richard Gere asks Julia Roberts how she likes her eggs and she has no idea? Do you remember thinking, how can you not know what kind of eggs you like? Or maybe that was just me. Maybe you and I owe her character an apology. As you may have discovered by now, it's not uncommon for a person to lose themselves to some extent in a relationship. I know I did, and maybe you lost yourself in small ways too, like forgetting how you like your eggs or how you actually really like your coffee or what type of coffee you like. Or perhaps it's about listening to music. You forgot what your favorite music is because your partner didn't enjoy listening to what you liked. Or maybe you lost yourself in more monumental ways, like 
I don't know, you were voting a certain way or you adopted the same beliefs as your husband at the time and you didn't necessarily agree with him, but it was just easier to agree. Or maybe you got married before you even had a chance to figure out who you really were. And whatever the case may be, now is the perfect opportunity to start rediscovering yourself. And in some cases, find yourself for the first time. Learn what it is that you like. Develop your own opinions and conclusions. Figure out you. It will help you find greater peace within your heart and mind as well as your life. Number four, your true growth and healing can finally begin. When you don't have to focus on nurturing a romantic relationship, you actually have a whole lot of extra time and energy that you're going to be able to redirect towards your own growth and healing. And doing so will enable you to be a better mother, a better lover to somebody else, and more importantly, you guys, a better version of yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not always fun and it's definitely not easy. And yeah, it hurts a whole heck of a lot because the only way to really heal and grow is to look inward and find the things that have been holding you back. What limiting beliefs have you been holding on to? What misconceptions or prejudices or biases have you been grasping onto? Well, let them go, guys. Rip them to shreds because those things start tend to run deep. And when we start dismantling them, it means that you are starting to create and build from a new foundation. And I know that it sucks, but once you rid yourself of those things, you get to rebuild with positives that will move you forward in your life. And that's what's known as healing. Number five, your life is a new beginning full of opportunity. The idea of being single may make you feel like your life is over, but in actuality, nothing could be farther from the truth. You know what's over? The part of your life that made you wonder how you ended up where you did. That part of your life that made you wish it wasn't your life. And guess what? That's now over. What you have in front of you is the most magical thing in the world. It's called possibility. From here, anything can happen. That's not new age feel good bullshit. It's a fact. And there's no telling where your life gets to go from here, which is both terrifying and exciting. You get to meet new friends, ignite new hobbies that you put aside, present yourself with new opportunities, do the things that you never thought you had time for or even envisioned. Now is the time where anything and everything is possible. And number six, your feelings of being alone are truly just a misnomer. There is a difference between being single and being alone. And unless you live on a deserted island with a population of one, or you're currently on the International Space Station, you're not alone, even if you're no longer married. And the same goes for if you don't live near family and you don't have the kinds of friends who are better than family. Look around you. There are billions of people on this planet and your people are out there. And if you feel alone, it's time to start looking for them and look for them in new and curious ways. Get involved in things, join groups, be it volunteering or with your neighbors or meetup groups. A lot of meetup groups are starting to move online. Look for meetup groups that align with your interests. Look for professional networking groups that are also going online, right? Opportunities are endless. Think out of your comfort zone, think out of the box because the mechanism is not what's important. You can create a new way to not feel alone, to ignite friendship. And it's not just your people waiting for you. It's about your life. 
And I want to share something with you guys. Now's the time to be social. And I know that that can be hard, especially if you don't want others to know what's going on, but trust me, it will help you. It could be as simple as starting a small conversation with your friends, with your family or anybody, or reaching out to somebody who you know can help you. Somebody like me or a therapist or a counselor, anybody. And creating a list of coping skills that you have could go on for pages and pages and pages and are definitely unique to each individual. But some of those coping skills include journaling, or I love those new adult coloring books, taking on a new sport, going on a run or a walk, doing yoga, deep breathing. Even if you just find one, it will help you tremendously. And most importantly, let yourself feel and even feel when a low day hits. And that doesn't mean that you have to shut out what you're truly feeling inside. And I know that it gets uncomfortable and I'm sure you're exhausted from it, but acknowledging your feelings and letting them play out actually helps you move through them. Remember, you're not alone and you're not bothering other people. Everybody in life has a problem. Everybody. And that doesn't mean that you're adding to another person's problems if you share how you feel. You are not a burden. And I have found that when I share thoughts and feelings with my friends, with my coach, with my therapist, that a huge weight is lifted off my shoulders and I do feel relief. The journey called life is filled with ups and downs, and that is what shapes us into the people that we are. And when you're having a bad day or a good day, remember that there are people who care about you, that you are here for a reason, and this world would not be the same without you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Divorced Woman's Guide podcast. If you like what you hear, please share this episode with someone you know or spread the word on social media. This is how I reach more divorcees around the world and provide them with the support they need to create their next best life. And I would also love to continue the conversation with you. So please friend me on Facebook, join my private Facebook group, The Divorce Rehab, And follow me on Instagram at Divorce Rehab with Wendy. I'll see you next time.